Well, welcome everyone. How's everyone doing tonight? My name is Guy Royce, and uh, welcome to Redis Monthly Live. Uh, I'm your host. Uh, with me tonight, we've got uh, three distinguished guests. Uh, we have uh, Justin Castilla, who's going to be presenting on uh, our Redis Command of the Month, uh, which is, what's the Redis Command of the Month, uh, Justin? It's going to be our Popple Push. Our Popple Push. That reminds me of cartoons, weird shows from my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have uh, Davies. Uh, Davies is going to be presenting on uh, how he used uh, Redis as a meta store for JuiceFS, which is uh, a, 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 you say, it's a POSIX-based file system that's uh, cloud-based, right? Yes. That is that sounds amazingly cool. <laughs> Can I say that is super cool? And we have uh, Mikhail Volkov. Uh, Mikhail is a, a former uh, member of the Redis team, uh, but now he's uh, uh, he's out on his own, but he's still a member of the Redis community, and we're uh, glad to have him here back with us. Uh, Tonight. Hello, so. hello everyone. And uh, what's your talk on, Mikhail? I'm going to talk about Redis plugins and how they can elevate your Redis experience. Cool. Uh, is it going to be something to do with Grafana, perhaps? Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, you know, just a suspicion that I had. So, um, so yeah, uh, this is Redis Monthly Live. Uh, every month, uh, we host uh, live speakers from around the world. And uh, we talk about Redis. So that's why we have this imaginative name for this show. So welcome, everyone. Um, so uh, let's see. Who do we got? Who, who goes first? Justin goes first, don't you? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But before we do that, I, I, instructions for I have notes here. I'm actually trying to read them and talk at the same time, and I'm utterly failing. Um, uh, during the talks, uh, if you're in the audience, you have a question, feel free to leave a comment uh, uh, on YouTube or on Twitch. Uh, we'll see them, uh, if, and I'll see them, uh, and hopefully the speaker will see them as well. And if uh, they, uh, you know, if it's a good question or something, you get a question, I can click on that and make it visible for everyone, and we can uh, get that answer for you. Uh, if we uh, don't get to them, we'll get to them after the talk's over. So we'll either get to them in the middle of the talk or when the talk's over. It just depends on if we see them or not, and, you know, all the, all those logistic -y things. So. Uh, so that's uh, how we're going to do things tonight. Um, Justin, are you ready? I am ready. Okay, let me uh, go ahead and drag you to the number one position and uh, get your uh, get your screen on. There you go. Cool, cool. And, uh, uh, the floor is yours, Justin. Awesome, thank you. Uh, yeah, so like Guy kind of hinted to, this kind of reminds us of cartoon characters and fantasy characters of yore. Uh, so I give you, here comes our popple push. Um, this is HR Puff and Stuff, a popular British children's TV show. Uh, Puff and Stuff, Popple Push, just goes together like peas and carrots. Uh, sorry if this triggers nightmares. It is a little disturbing to me, but hey, you know, we were kids back then. So, our Popple Push. What is our Popple Push? Um, it is a Redis command. It's not the Mayor of Living Island, if you actually watch the TV show. Um, it operates on a Redis list data structure. And... Um, essentially, it does two things in one command. It pops the last element at the tail of the list source. So it takes this source list. Oops. Let me go back. It takes the source list, pops the element off of the tail, and then it pushes that element that it just popped off onto the head of the destination. And that's actually quite fast, O of 1. So you can't really get better than that. Um, so let's actually see this in action uh, with some example use case. So our popple push with the source and destination, two separate lists. Um, my source list is A, B, C, D, E, F. This could be any kind of key, uh, kind of, I'm sorry, value, string value if you want. Um, and then I have a destination list, which is U, V, W, X, Y, Z, just an as an example. So our popple push, again, does two things. First, it pops off the last element of the source list element, and it pushes that last element from source onto the head of destination. And this is one single command, uh, which is usually two separate commands, a pop and a push. So that's cool. And this just gives you, for you visual learners, uh, where the element actually ends up going. So what is our popple push good for? Well, um, for building queues, of course, but this is a reliable queue. Um, a queue is unreliable at the moment between the producer's pop and the consumer's push command. So those two different commands. Our popple push removes the element from the producer queue and adds to the consumer queue in one command. 
So you're, you're getting rid of that, that opportunity for failure or loss of data. Also, and I actually love these, remember uh, learning about these in college, the circular list. So calling our popple push with source and destination as the same list will move the last element to the first position. So you're essentially having a circular motion. This is great for when a list must be processed continually and as fast as possible because it's just one single list. Uh, a couple of use cases. So rotating through a list of sites to check connectivity with as little delay as possible. So continually iterating over and over through a cycle of sites to check to make sure that they're healthy. Or uh, in a much simpler case, advancing through players in a turn-based game. So if you're playing online Monopoly when you should be working, uh, you just Bit, traverse through the list of players, or you can even traverse through the board game tiles if you're playing a cyclical game like Monopoly. Um, there's also the R Popple Push sibling, BR Popple Push, or Burr Popple Push, um, and it's a blocking version of R Pop L Push. So uh, the command blocks a connection when there are no elements to pop from uh, the source. Uh, so it'll just wait on source until there's actually an element, and then it'll pull or sorry, pop uh, that element and add it to destination as a push. So cool. Um, sad news though, I know this is an exciting command, but it is deprecated as of 6.2. So instead, uh, we prefer to use lmove, uh, which is basically just like our popple push, but instead of always doing um, a head to tail or a tail to head, you have an actual option. You can actually put uh, from head to head or tail to tail, tail to head, head to tail, any kind of combination thereof. Um, and there is an actual blocking option as well, because that was really necessary. Um, and you can, the exact same uh, use cases. So reliable queues or uh, cyclical lists, iterations, uh, same applies. It's just, it gives you more flexibility. So that's why they actually are preferring to use LMOVE instead of BRR popple push or ER popple push. But it's just, it's fun to say, it's fun to use. Um, so, what's in the works for me and Redis University? Uh, we're still on course to release um, RU301 running Redis at scale. So, we're going to learn about high availability, durability, clusters, AOF files, RDB files. Very exciting. It's actually being released on my birthday. So, please join and enroll in the class and take it. Let me know what you think. Um, we're also excited to announce that we're going to be having a no cost Redis certified developer exam. So, right now it's at cost um, and a scheduled proctored exam is required for that. But now we're going to make it soon free of cost and free to schedule when you actually want to do it. So really exciting there. And I'm going to be releasing some new videos on our Redis uh, Labs YouTube channel. So always you know, check our YouTube channel. And below, of course, we have our Discord, our Redis University, and our YouTube channels. So please stay connected and let me know what you want to see. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. Uh, R popple push and br popple push. Burr popple push. Burr so popple much push. fun to say. Everybody it, it, say it at the same time. Burr popple push. Burr popple push. Wait, Burr we popple didn't say it at the same time. We're doing uh, it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Justin. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I actually hadn't hadn't occurred to me that you could do the uh, circular. Uh, th you can make the source and destination list the same thing. That's a really clever idea. Yeah, I was looking at the command. And I was like, can we actually circulate through this? Can the source be the same as the destination? And it can. And that's just fun. It's just fun. I Simple pleasures for me. <laughs> cool. Very, very cool. Well, thank you, Justin. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Up next, we have Davies. Uh, Davies is going to present on uh, JuiceFS. So uh, are you ready, Davies? Yes. OK, here we go. Well, let me put you in the poll position, and uh, Justin and I will get out of your way. Uh, the floor is yours, Davies. Hello, everyone. So today, I'd like to share how we use Redis to build a JuiceFS and doing Redis at the Meta store. And a little more of a background on me. So I have been working on open source software, especially the infrastructure parts for more than 10 years. And I have been also of BeansDB, Depark, and also working on Apache Spark as a computer. I have working in Bay Area for Facebook and Databricks oh, since 2017. 
I found the juice data to focus on JuiceFS and to build it for the lab for to developers. So what is JuiceFS? JuiceFS is a POS6 file system, especially designed for the cloud native environment. So you can use that in public cloud or use, use that with Kubernetes. It's, um, it is process compatible, so you can use that in both Linux, Mac, or Windows. And it's also HDFS compatible, so all the uh, compute engine in Hadoop ecosystem can use directly be using the Java SDK and can easily um, use in Kubernetes with our CSI drivers. It also have built-in S3 compatible gateways so you can use the S3 protocol to talk to them. So in order to do that, you have to separate the beta and the data part. And it used the object storage for another S3 as uh, for the data, for the content of the files. And it, pick, uh, it use a database for the meta part. So in order to have the tree hierarchy and and the Redis is our first choice for the for the meta engine. So the so why why Redis? So because that is a, a in memory database, so it can provide consistent low latency access to, to the metadata. Comparing to the data, the meta metadata is um, one in thousand. So the size of the meta is much much smaller than than, than data. So we can use host the author in memory to provide low latency access. And the second, the Redis provides a lot of helpful data structures, for example, string, list, high set, and sorted sets, and, and the counters. So it's much easier to talk with Redis to build a complex data structures. And the Redis provide a batch execution and also transactions. So we can use that to have low latency transactions. And also Redis is open source and have a great community and uh, Redis and many cloud vendors provide Redis as a database and uh, as, a, as a service. So we can easily get a hosted Redis from cloud vendors or from Redis Net. Then how can we organize the data in Redis and to make it look at like a file system? And for a typical file system, we call the, the file or directory at a node. Uh, at in at, it's short at the blue square in, in the left. For example, D1, D2, D3. And uh, then the green arrow, we usually call an H. So H, we are connecting from a parent node to a, a file or to a subdirectory. And then we can use a string to represent a node using the inode as the key and put all the attributes in the value. And for the age, we're using a hash set for all the age. And the key is the inode of the parent. And the name of the age will be the field in the hash set. And the value of the field will be the type and also the inode of the child of children. And for each fire, especially for the big fires, we will split that in to a fixed size chunks. For example, C5, C F5, we have two chunks, zero and the one. And uh, in the yellow rectangle, and we use the inode and the index as the key for the, for the chunks. 
and the value will be a list, a, a list of smaller blocks. So for using these three keys, we can represent uh, the core data data of the of the meta. And there are also other who can be things to manage the life cycle of the data. So, so the core of them is just the three keys. So in order to provide uh, the many API of a post class systems, and some of them are really complicated for another to redeem. So we rely on Redis transactions to make them consistent. And also the tra transaction is, is kind of optimistic lock. So you, in the beginning, you watch some of the keys and then update them in a batch and finally commit them. If there is another transaction also updating some of the keys, then the, the transaction will be approached. You can redo that again. Also, that is support uh, counters. And with the half of transactions, we can implement a counters without using the increase or decrement. And we can put the counters in part of the strings and we make can make sure that the updates are atomic. For example, the, the rename will touch many keys many keys, even more than seven. So in order to make the keys are consistent and uh, make the relame at atomic, so we have to use, use that transactions. There's another useful tricks we have engaged is, is um, to implement a, a, a counter at a sparse counter. So, by default, the counter in Julius unit is zero. So for the missing, missing one, we have zero. So if you try to increment on uh, a missing keys, it will be uh, assuming at zero. But the, the one is the dominant value of a reference counter. For example, if you want to count um, each block is used by how many files. Mm. And most of blobs we use by only one file. So one is dominant value. Then we change to treat that the missing counter is as one. And how can we do that is by, we don't increase the reference county in for the first time, for the first reference. For example, when we mm, write a new file, we will not increase the reference counters. But when we remove the files or we copy on the range, we will increase the reference. And finally, if you see that if you see that the counter reached minus one, we know that no one is using that and we can safely delete the blob. And also we will scanning all the reference counters and uh, clean the zero of it. And uh, during the cleanup, we have to use the transactions to make sure that no other one is using that. And the latency of the metadata operations is very important. And for example, the, the lookup is, is called massively and uh, the lookup call, the latency of lookup is very um, important for the file system. So usually you will issue a hash get and follow a, another get of the, of the, of the attributes of, of the node. And in here we can using the Lua script to combine the hash get and get together with a single script on, on the right side called the lookup. 
then we can save one round trip from the client to the Redis. So, and they reduce the, the latency. And also for, for the Java SDK or the, for the, um, from the SDK, we have a massive resolving code to resolve the a path to a, a node. So we, we will be calling times. So we can also use this, this technique to implement the multi-level loop at a single Lua script, and we just call that once. For example, if you have a path with 10 level directories and files, single resolving call of the Lua, Lua script in the Redis, you can have one in, only one run trip between your client and the server. So you may take like, Point mm. one milliseconds of without the Lua script, you have to call lookup, lookup, lookup again. So there's much difference between them. Combine all these together, and uh, we can have a, a great. Postgres compatible and uh, HDFS compatible file system. And it has passed all the test cases from the PJD FI test cases. It, it's about 8,000 test cases. And it also supports extended attributes and the file logs. And for memory efficiency, just earning and use 300 bytes per fire for small fires. So that means you can have 100 million files um, for 30 gigabytes memory from in Redis. And if you have many bigger fires, it, it would take and uh, require 1000 bytes per gigabytes of data. That means one gigabyte memory in Redis could hold additional one petabyte data. So that's a huge, that's a lot. And for the performance wise, the latency, when you talk to the QCFS, talk to Redis, could be as, as low as 70 microsec microseconds to about 400 microseconds, but depends on your network. So it's five times faster than MySQL or other um, databases. So you can see all the benchmarks, all the numbers on, on, on the GitHub repository. There are some lessons we learned during the practice. And initially, we're using a scan to find all the keys with a certain prefix, but Redis does not support efficient prefix scanning. So it's very easy to overload the Redis. And then we change to use the hash set. So for some of the keys, you really need to, to scan them. We just use a hash set for all these keys. And that does not mean we cannot use scan at all. So for certain cases that we know, we only scan the keys uh, uh, from a single client, uh, we can still use the scan, scan for a certain prefix. And also because the Reddit transaction is kind of um, optimistic uh, lock. So that could be high conflict, a uh, lot of conflicts between them and the heavy workload. Uh, that may mean, may means the failures 
after like many times of retry. So we add another um, local pessimistic uh, locks just using the mutex in, in the client side. So for example, giving uh, a fee of the keys, we can we can choose a mutex based on the primary key and then use that as the lock for the transaction. And when we implement the, the Lua script for the lookup and the resolve, initially we're just using um, the latest Lua version to implement that. Um, but uh, when we put that in Redis, we realize that uh, the Lua embedded in Redis only Lua 5.1, and there are some features, for example, the, the bitmap operations are lacking, and uh, we have to stick with the Lua 5.1. There are also some challenges on using Redis as the meta store. So the first one is um, how can we persistent the data? So when we first uh, released the uh, Joseph as open source, there's a lot of questions on from hack news talking about how they are concerns on the persistency. Maybe because Redis provide uh, the uh, flexibility on the persistency that some people may may not realize that they do have um, a, a few choice. For example, you can enable the IBD, you can enable the AOF, also you can use AOF for every transaction or, or, or every second. So it depends on the latency on your, your disk. So based on uh, our internal test, if you have very fast SSD, it's recommended to use always as the I think strategy for for your app labs is uh, is uh, mm, good for your uh, for it's very good for to position your data. It's also fast enough. And the second one is how can we have a highly available class of Redis? Because the, the replication between Redis server is asynchronous. So even you have even you have a way to elect a leader or mm, to do the failover, there's still uh, a small chance that you may lose the, the last few of com uh, updates. So mm, thanks to the um, the service from car vendor, vendors, then we can just pick uh, the, mm, the ready service and don't need to worry about all this. And we rely on transaction of the keys. So we cannot use Redis cluster because it does not support the transaction across the keys or across regions. And also we cannot use other Redis compatible implementations because most of them does not support the transactions. And we are looking into Redis draft from from Redis Lab. That looks promising, but not in GA yet. So finally, here are some takeaways. So thanks to, to Redis, we can build a process compatible file system on, on top Redis and, and S3. We can have a, a better way to work 
S3 in the cloud. So, and the two servers is also open source in, in GitHub. You can find the repository in GitHub. And the second, that is a very good choice to build a complex low latency application. And the, the transaction is very good to make your data consistent. Thank you. Well, thank you, Davies. That was fantastic. Um, I just posted the link to uh, your uh, library in the chat, so uh, all the watchers on YouTube and uh, on Twitch will be able to click it easily instead of having to wrap, quickly try and type it down. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so so uh, thanks again for speaking. Um, up next, we have Mikhail. Mikhail, welcome. Thank you, Guy. Uh, so your talk tonight is on uh, Redis plugins for Grafana here? That's correct. Do your magic. There we go. Uh, I will slide you up here so that you're in the, the first position so uh, that it all works the way it's supposed to. And uh, I'll give you the floor. Thank you, Guy. Appreciate it. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about Redis plugins for Grafana. Get my cursor back. And my name is Mikhail Volkov. I love Redis, and I want to share my experience creating cool projects based on the Redis. You can find me at Mikhail Volkov on Twitter. Today, I'm going to talk about Redis, Grafana, Redis plugins for Grafana. I will do the demo, and then we may have, we may have a Q&A session. First, I'm going to talk about Redis. Redis is one of the simplest and powerful tools ever created. It can be deployed anywhere. It can be IoT devices, it can be deployed in a cloud or on premises. Also, Redis is a multimodal database. It means that it supports different modules, which was introduced uh, by Redis Labs. It's Redis time series to support time series data structure, Redis gears, which is dynamic execution framework for your Redis data, Redis JSON for your JSON type data, graph for your graph database, full text search implemented in Redis search, Redis AI, which is a Redis module for serving tensors and execute deep learning graphs and many other modules. So when you have your database, which you can deploy it anywhere in cloud and promises, IoT devices, and it's a multimodal database, how do you interact with Redis? Most of the users probably use, still, still use Redis CLI, which is uh, you use the terminal, connect to that, provide multiple options, and maybe connect to a database. When you're working with multiple databases or Redis instances at the same time, you probably open different terminals and you try to navigate between them and try to understand what happened with your Redis database. So is it the best way to interact with the Redis? Now I'm going to talk about Grafana. Grafana is the world's most popular observability tool. Grafana is highly extensible. It support, it has uh, provided by community 110 data sources. And data sources, it's a special kind of plugin which communicate with the external sources like database, different services. 92 special panels. Which, which allows to add new types of visualization for the data you uh, get from your data sources. And there are 17 applications which bundle your data sources and the panels to provide cohesive experience. And they also provide application pages to elevate and enhance your experience. So what can you do with Grafana plugins? Let's take a look at this video. You have a Grafana, and Grafana can have different kinds of plugins which interact with your Grafana using HTTP protocol like Prometheus or with a backend platform like Redis. And then this data can be implemented or visualized using graphs, custom panels, different visualization tools, uh, created some application pages as well. And there is one more custom panel which we created in Volkov Labs for showing base64 images. And all of this, uh, visualization provided to the end user. And also Redis plugins ecosystem, this is the one, so it means the capabilities of Prometheus. Prometheus, it's another tool which uh, works uh, great with Grafana. And uh, if you work with Redis, there is a Redis exporter for Metrix, which actually gets the data from uh, uh, statistics, Metrix from Redis and saves them to the Prometheus. There is a Redis enterprise metric exporter which works with the Redis Enterprise. And you can combine this metrics, 
uh, in Prometheus with the data you will get in different uh, data sources and application plugins, which I'm going to talk next. So Redis plugins. Redis plugins for Grafana let you connect Grafana to Redis to visualize more types of data in more ways than otherwise would be possible. And all this increased functionality comes with the most streamlined workflow. When I'm working and developing my projects on um, using Redis, I want to see my operation per second, what kind of clients connected to my database. I want to have a Redis CLI with the help for the commands I enter. I want to see the latency per command. And if I run, and the Redis is a real-time database. So if there is a, some command which is an, an efficient command, and you see the latency spike in your database, you want to know what kind of commands do that. So it's easily can you can easily see that on the latency panel and look for big skis and see what's happening else with the database. And all these dashboards in Grafana, they are highly customizable. So you can put whatever you need, any application data or system metrics. So Redis plugins, it's ecosystem. The base layer layer is Redis data source. It allows connecting to any Redis database on premises and the cloud. It can connect to Redis Enterprise, Redis Open Source, in Azure, AWS, anywhere you can connect to yourself from your point where you install Redis, when you install Grafana. Then there is a Redis application, which provides application pages and custom panels for Redis data source. And on top of this pyramid is a Redis Explorer, which allows connecting to Redis Enterprise software clusters using REST API. And then when you connect to the Redis data, uh, enterprise software clusters, you can connect to every single uh, database using Redis data source and also monitor your enterprise clusters. So Redis data source support different modules. Actually, when we developed Redis plugins or Redis first data source, we created it for Redis time series, a time series data structure. Then we introduced na native data types like hash, set, streams, and support statistics using info command. After that, we started to experiment with Redis Gears, an engine for data processing, added capabilities for Redis Graph, Graph database module, and the next version will introduce Redis JSON, JSON data type for Redis, so you can actually get the data from your JSON keys, and Redis AI, a Redis module for executing deep learning and machine learning models, which also will be supported in Redis Data Source 2.0. So Redis application provide four different panels, and we are working to, for additional panels for Redis AI. So first panel is Redis CLI, which provides command line interface and allow you to send commands. And it's actually a support help function. It shows you the help for all the commands when they was uh, introduced, when they was depreciated, and it also actually includes some commands from Redis 7.0, which is going to be introduced in the new version. There is a latency panel, which provides common latency based on info command stat. There is a Redis Max memory keys panel, which actually, it's a very interesting panel, which it's used custom command called TM scan, which scans the keys and sort result based on memory usage. It's com this command is not a part of Redis, but it was introduced uh, in a Grafana backend, which is um, implemented in Golem, and you can add any logic you want. So we create the special TM scan command, which is used from the front end. And there is one more panel called uh, Redis Gear Script Editor, which supports Python syntax and allow it to execute functions in blocking and in blocking modes using RG PI, PI execute command. So let me uh, show me how it works. I have my Grafana installed on the, on the Linux server next in, in my home. And this is the Redis application. So this Redis application, it's uh, as, as you see in the ecosystem, it's a middle level. Uh, when I have a connection to cluster remote, which is my enterprise cluster, and it has different databases, AnalyzeDB, DataDB, Graph database, time series. It shows you what kind of modules support it. And this is what we can understand from Redis instance itself when you run command, command right, to get all the commands, and then we look for particular command supported by the modules. There is a crypto database, which is uh, in very interesting one with the Redis time series. It's a new project I'm going to write article about. There is a Grafana plugins, which is not available. And from this uh, application, you can go directly to CLI, 
dashboard, you can go to Redis Gears if there is a Redis Gears supported, and you can uh, change, update your settings. And this is the Redis application. It has, uh, there is a menu as well for all custom applications in the Grafana. And this is the view, it's a home view. Then if you click on any database, for example, my crypto database, you can see there is some operation per second going on, some network, memory. There is some X range command in a slow log, which takes a while to execute. Statistics for the command and if it's uh, with uh, Redis instance support cluster, you can actually see what kind of nodes participate in this cluster. Also, you can go to directly to the one of the predefined dashboard called Redis CLI, Redis Gears, or you can do it the same from the menu. So this is the Redis CLI dashboard, which I already showed in my presentation. It provides information about operation per second, clients, memory, network, keys, latency command, which I talked before, and we can find uh, keys, which is the biggest keys in your database. Sometimes when you have a lot of keys in your database and you may see out of memory error, which says that there is no more memory left, and you want to find what is the biggest keys in your database, how you can do that. There are multiple ways you can do that. This is the one of the way I like. You just click start scanning. It connects to the database. I don't have a lot of keys, just 48 keys, but it connects to your database and in real time, it's, uh, it does a scan command, does a memory usage command, find the type, and then get the top keys, counted 100 keys at a time. So it's kind of cause latency. And uh, you see, I have my latency spike as well over here. So you can actually monitor it, but it's, it's, uh, you can use it in production. Just don't use it in on peak time, just use it off peak time, but it's pretty safe to use. And you can, as you can see, I, I found my tickers for Bitcoin and Ethereum streams, which has one megabyte of data already in them. And all these panels, they, they don't have the data, the actually metrics, they're not stored anywhere. As I said, you can store them in Prometheus and Prometheus can collect this data all the time. The, these uh, panels collect the data in real time. So they use a special streaming technology. They connect to a database every second, it's just configurable, get the data, and then it shows you with data how your keys change, memory, which is my operation per second. And there is already CLI, which you can use to execute any commands. So I can do keys command. And as you can see, when I try to do keys command, there is a yellow message. Consider keys as a command that should be used in product, should only be used in production environment with extreme care because you don't, you should not use this keys command, right? If you will do a shutdown command, it will show you it could cause data latency in production environment. So don't use it as well. Let's use the scan command, right? It show you what kind of uh, parameters it has when it's available. There is a URL actually as well. And you can click on, on, uh, on this URL to get more data about command. If you want to use one of the modules like uh, TS, it will show you all the commands for that uh, for time series module rg for radius gears you can see all the commands and when you do rgpi execute you will actually see additional information about this particular command let's do scan zero and you can see there is my my keys right as uh, they're formatted if you want to get this data in non-cli mode in a raw mode you can do it as well do the same scan command and it's in raw mode you can copy paste it and use it the way you need to. So this is a Redis CLI panel dashboard. And also there is a Redis Gears dashboard. So with Redis Gears dashboard, it's uh, supported on a databases with Redis Gears. Uh, I think my data data DB has Redis Gears. As I see, I have a, one of the registration called CMT start, which is registered as a async as a command reader. You can see the memory usage by Redis Gears. You can run any command you want using Python function, and you can execute it in blocking and unblocking mode, specify your requirements as well. And if you have any available requirements already registered in Gears, you can see it as well over here. And it was Redis application with the custom panels. And if you want to create your own special dashboard with any panels you want to request any data. You click uh, create new dashboard, add a new panel, 
and then you choose any one of the predefined panels or you can choose ready cli gears max memory latency and there is a base 64 image pdf panel created by Volkov of labs as well for our demo and there is a redis explorer as well which has a similar concept on the home you can see all the clusters redis enterprise clusters not all oss clusters redis enterprise software and uh, if you can see all the databases on this cluster and something is not working here it's probably because one of my databases is broken on this uh, redis explorer and i fixed this issue in master i know that but probably it's old release and then you can see there is the enterprise clusters with the latency with the memory and the cpu when you have multiple enterprise clusters you can easily monitor them from this dashboard because uh, what you have in the Redis X Enterprise, you have view only for one cluster. This uh, Redis Explorer can show information about multiple clusters at the same time. And you can choose any clusters you want here. And uh, as I said, you can get the metrics using Prometheus, or you can see it using API calls, latency, requests, memory, also events, who is your user connected, what is the modules created on this database with the IDs, and alerts and events as well over here you can choose go to the notes view see information about your notes and a cluster databases this information about all your databases and as you can see one of the database in the pending it's errors errored out so this is was will be, should be fixed in a new version and it was Redis Explorer. It has cluster overview, cluster nodes, databases, and enterprise clusters to see information like a license expiration, name of the cluster, and information, general information about your cluster for your multiple clusters. And it was a demo slide. Where is it? Let's go back. So another example I want to demonstrate is how to forecast stocks and crypto prices using Redis, Profit, and Grafana. And this is it. On this diagram, you can see that we are going to use Node.js application, which will import the data as a Redis time series. This Redis time series will be processed using Redis gears with the Profit Facebook model to make predictions. And all this data, Redis time series, will be shown in Grafana, on Grafana dashboards to the end users. Let's see how it works together. So there is a Redis Finance Profit project, and uh, it's on the GitHub page. I will provide the links later on. And I'm going to use Docker Compose, which uses uh, this special Redis Profit container. This Redis Profit container is built every night based on the Redis time series with the gears, and it includes a requirement for profit model. Profit model has a lot of dependency. You can build it yourself in a production environment. When you experiment or want to use profit, I recommend to use this, uh, this container. It's easy to use and start, start it like that with uh, Docker or Docker Compose. And also I'm going to use Grafana in Docker as well, started from an image Redis app latest. Also we provide some environment additional and now Grafana will be available on port 3000 and Redis is going to be available at port 6379. Also, I will have some provisioning as well to provision my databases and application. Let's do the start command. It will pull latest version of Redis and Grafana. I already did it today. So now it's going to start two containers, Grafana and the Redis. So Redis started, now Grafana is going to be started as well. So if you go to our browser, localhost, refresh, there is a new fresh instance of Grafana. It has Redis application. And uh, if you will go to home, loading time depends on the number of configured data sources. It should show our Redis. And Redis takes a little bit of a time because uh, it's uh, this requ uh, Redis gears when it's starting up, it has to check all the requirements. And because it has the Redis gears as well, let's click on Redis gears. So Redis gears calculate memory usage, there is no registrations, and you can see all the available requirements from the 
uh, which was pre-installed when it was built using actions. It has a lot of requirements, and one of them we are looking at is a, is a profit version 4002, which is the one we are going to use, and multiple different tools dependency for it. OK, it's done. Now let's uh, take a look at finance profit. And I have some data from Yahoo Finance for different stocks and uh, cryptocurrency, and which is uh, in C CSP file. And I just import this data as a Redis time series. So it's also it's a simple CSP files tabulated with the dates, open, high, low, close, and a volume. So now it's going to some of the data is not right. And now it's imported that. As I said, uh, when we started Grafana, it's already provisioned some of the dashboard. And one of the dashboard as a part of the pro pro uh, project is called finance. So on uh, this project, you can see, choose a symbol. And with symbols, it's a S member, which is a command that takes, which takes uh, sets, uh, members of the set. And this is, I have Apple, ADA, BTC, Ethereum, for example. Let's pick them up. And you can see all the open and closed prices, volume for, for all of them. This is uh, the data how Apple was changed uh, with a close, high, low. This is the current data. Not, not the current, which is the one when updated it back in June. And you can have a Python function here as well and the Redis CLI. So with Redis CLI, you can see if you want the keys, which is in the database, and you can use any TS info command, for example, for one of the keys. See what information, what kind of labels it has, how many samples in different modes as well. Now, when we imported that, now we can actually execute our Gears script, which will do the prediction. So the way how I want to do that, uh, you, can, you can run it. Uh, let's open the script. Let's copy paste. I want to do this 30 days. And I'm going to put it in, uh, in Python function. Uh, I will do it as an unblocking because it will take some time to run it. Uh, when you do the blocking command, because of the uh, um, timeout on the Grafana site, it should be 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and it's configurable. You can increase it, but we can do it in the unblocking command and we click run script. So when it's executed, it should show you uh, ID of the script. And when we go back to Redis, you can see that it started to calculate prediction. It will take some time. So now if we go back to our currency, it should show it. For example, this is a, ADA was first on the list. So you can see there is a prediction that ADA will go up, right? There is a up, low, and open prices. And this is for, based on the 30 days. We'll see how, how, how it will go. And the same will be done on, for all other cryptocurrency and talks. So you can, using, and there is one more calculated for Ethereum, and it's going to be calculated for all of them. It just takes time. So when you want to change your model, change something in the profit on the gears, you just update it in Python function, and just execute it from here. You don't need anything else. You don't need any other tools to use. Just you can use on the same dashboard. Same, if you want to see the latency on your database, something else, what's happening with the database, you just add additional panels and it just works. And it was a prediction of uh, stocks and uh, crypto prices. Let me stop this container. 54. And I want to show one more demo. If I have time, Guy. You're good. I'm good? OK. So one more demo is analyzing camera feed using Redis AI, OpenCV, and Redis plugins for Grafana. It's, uh, this demo is actually based on a, uh, on a demo by Redis Labs a couple of years ago when the, there was a uh, video, 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 and it was analyzed using Redis CI and OpenCV library, and by, it was based. It was introduced when Redis Gears was introduced at the same time, and because there was no Grafana data source or Grafana plugins, it's actually used a special JSON server and Prometheus to show all this data. Now we can 
avoid all of that. We can streamline the workflow, as I, as I said before. And we just have IoT camera. For that, I'm going to use my Raspberry Pi, which actually has a has a screen as well. This is this is the one. It has a nice Le Lego case for my Raspberry Pi, and it doesn't have any data because it's not processing yet. And it has a camera on the back. So this is the cam camera module on the back, and this is the one I'm going to use. So this IoT camera, it's going to capture frame video frames. They save to the Redis streams. This Redis streams will be processed by Redis Gears with Redis EI, PI Torch module. And then it's good, the statistics and measurements, how long it takes to process them, will be saved in time series. And the process frames will be saved and Redis streams back. And all this data can be displayed in a Grafana. Let's take a look how it all works together. So this is a camera AI module. And uh, it has different AI scripts for PI Torch, for AI itself. It has a tiny YOLO model, which actually used to understand the data. It has a Gears YOLO script, which executed and registered as a stream reader, which is actually executed based on a stream, which filled with the camera frames per each, for each frame. And it has dashboards, it has a camera script, PI script as well, which actually will be run on, on uh, Raspberry Pi. And it will send the data to the external Redis database with the requirements. And it has predefined dashboards and provision information. It also has a Docker Compose. For, this, for previous demo, we use Redis Profit, which has a profit uh, requir uh, requirement installed, uh, we had the Redis Gears and Redis Time Series, which is more complicated demo. It's use Redis AI and it use OpenCV library. OpenCV library is a special li library to, for processing video frames. And it has a lot of dependencies as well. So you can install it yourself on the production with multiple libraries. Or there is a Docker image which we created using uh, called Redis OpenCV, which actually created every night with the latest versions as well. And this is the one we are going to use. It has OpenCV already installed. And Redis application as well, same Grafana image. OK, let me start it. Because I'm using MacBook Pro with M1, I just realized that I, uh, the latest build somehow doesn't work today on M1. This is why I'm going to use external Linux server. It's going to start for Redis. So it's uh, Grafana started. And I have my external server, which I'm going to use uh, start the Docker container, Docker run. I'm going to use net host so I can connect. Uh, so it's going to be uh, connected in the host mode. And I can connect to that from external hosts on port 6379. And I'm going to use this Redis OpenCV container. Let's start it. So as you can see, it's uh, starting. It uh, has RG, Redis Gears module. And it's executed multiple commands with OpenCV Python library. This is the one we are looking for. It's processed. It's required NumPy. NumPy already installed, so we're good. PLO, different requirements, so we're ready to accept connections. OK. So now let's go to Grafana. And Grafana has this special camera processing and the camera dashboards. Let's take a look at camera processing. So it has not showing nothing to display with this special base 64 panel, which was created specifically for this project. There is no frames queue, no processing time, no registrations. You can see there is a latency happening and it uses uh, dump registration command and range command. Profiler doesn't show anything and there is a Python function as well. Let's register our script and the model. So uh, as I said, Redis AI will be supported in the next version of Redis data source. And then they will have a special panel to actually create the scripts, modify the scripts, and upload the models. For now, I'm going to do it from the command line. So this is my yellow script, which is PyTorch script. And I'm going to upload it to the this cluster remote. It's my external Linux server using AI script set command. And it's going to be run on CPU. And source, it will take it from input. 
Then there is another script which will uh, model store. It's actually a new command for RDCI. It uh, this command replace model set, which is depreciated, deprecated, and uh, you just upload the new model called YOLO model, which is going to be run on CPU as well. Take some time. Okay, now it's loaded. Both of them are loaded. So now to execute this ready CI script and uh, and a model, we have to we should have create Redis gear script. So let's copy it from a gear solo API, which has different modules, different functions to uh, to process image, to resize image, uh, do the profiler information as well, how long each each uh, interaction each process takes, save back it to the um, to the streams as well. And as I said, it's going to be stream reader. So it's going to be registered. And every time when the stream camera zero will has new data and new new record, it's going to be processed by gears. And this gears will uh, add time series for the profiler. And it's going to be to add using exact command to new uh, camera zero YOLO uh, stream new frames, process frames with uh, some additional information. Okay, let's copy it. Go to camera processing. There is a Python function. And uh, because it's registration only, it can be run in the blocking mode. Of course, if we don't have OpenCV, it has to be installed probably here at this place. And OpenCV can be built. Maybe it can be broken, so I have to investigate. Because we already have OpenCV pre-installed, we just run the script. And it's OK, so it's already there. And because it's all this uh, panel is based on streams, uh, on the streaming technology, you can see there is a registration already there. There is a stream reader, which it's haven't triggered yet, and status is OK. And you can see there is a latency happened right when we register the script. There is some latency, but there is no information yet. Let's connect to Raspberry Pi. This is my Raspberry Pi. And I have this camera gear script, which actually connect, uh, go to the camera, grab the frame from the camera. I specified this is my Redis uh, external server. And I want to grab the six frames per second, which is pretty good for me. You can increase that as much as you want. So it's connecting to the server. And now it's grabbing the frames. It show you ID in Redis streams, and it shows you the size of the image. Let's go back to the processing. Nothing is working. Right. Right, and nothing is working because it uses Redis data source, which is connected to host Docker internal, which is my internal Docker. Let's change it. So I'm going to use uh, my cluster remote on port 6379. And I'm going to connect to that in the standalone mode, save and test. And as you can see, the data source is working as expected. If you use OSS cluster, you can choose cluster. If you use Sentinel, you can use Sentinel option as well. Provide master name um, for the Sentinel, Sentinel ACL, which is a new feature introduced in Radius 6. You can use separate password for Sentinel and the instance itself, there is a password if you do IoT device, and this IoT device has Redis and Grafana together, they can connect using socket as well. We are going to use standalone. And uh, as I said before, you can specify ACL with a username and password. You can specify the pool size. If you have a lot of requests and many panels, you can increase it to 20 connections at the same time. And if you use TLS for Azure, for any other cloud providers, you can specify client certificate, client key, and authority as well. And if your name is not verifiable, you can skip, ver skip verify, which is not best security practice. Okay, save and test. And let's go back to camera processing. And I hope it's going to work. Okay, there is a frames queue, this is a processing time. And there is a frames in queue. What did I miss? So it's pushing the frames. Uh, 
and it should have Ah, right, because I did the registration and I, I, I did registration on my local Docker. That's right, sorry about that. Uh, let's do one more registration, run script. Now it's okay. Okay, now you can see that registration is going on. The relative is unsuccessful, no abort so far. And you can see there is an image. So if I take my my camera. Now it, you see if there is a processing time and there is a queue. Now it has to process all the queue and show it to me. And then the frame, the next frame is going to be the image. Let's see how it's, how fast it can process the queue. Okay, so now it's processed the queue. Almost catched up. So there is a processing time there is a frames queue, there is a people count, there is none. And now you can see it's, it's uh, is it done? Okay, it's still catching up. Okay, and now if I'll turn it back and look at me, look at myself, you can see my face, right? And you can see there is a people count. So what is happening right now, it takes the frames from the ready streams it's analyzing using Redis gears uh, with yellow model PI torch. It's uh, show you red box with my face, right? With the people it found, analyzed. And it show with special camera zero idea of the stream and how many people it found. If it's going to be more than one person, it's going to show you more than, than one. And you can see the processing time, uh, frames queue as well. Uh, how many registration, which is how your scripts working. There is a profiled information as well. Let me refresh it because uh, M range does not support streaming yet. In a profiler, you can see there is a huge delay because there were so many frames which was not processing without Redis gear script. And then it's uh, decreased and now we, the processing is less than 100 millisecond. And you can see there is a mm, delay, uh, how long it takes for boxes, to show, get the boxes, to process the model. Model takes most of the time. Scripts, resize, read, and how much takes for the store. And you can see there is a latency as well. What kind of commands use the latency? There is X read group, X add, TS add, ref range, and this is a latency per command, and this common latency. So if you go to Ready C Live, for example, you can see how many operations per second happening. It's 100 operation per second, how many clients connected, how much memory it's all used, additional information with latency as well. And you can find biggest keys. It's camera zero yellow. It's a stream, as I said. It's a stream with resulted images. And uh, it's already 30 megabyte because it store uh, images itself, JPEG images. Camera zero, it's a stream with the incoming images. As soon as it's processed by gears, there is a special parameter called uh, trim stream. It's actually trim with data from the stream, process it, it, and then save it to the camera zero yellow. And there is different performance time series data as well, which is uh, shown as a T TS range and TSM range commands. And there is a, and uh, the, this, this is a camera uh, dashboard, which I showed before. And this is the one actually I have on my uh, IoT device, right? So at the same time, I mean, because uh, Grafana can be installed on Raspberry Pi, on any device actually, you can stream and get the same data. So you kind of can, can see everything what I happened here, uh, what uh, everything what the camera is capturing, you can see on the IoT device, on this monitor, and then save it to the database as well for additional post-processing. So it's all happening in real time as you see. Let's take, uh, let's continue. And it was the second inter very interesting use case. So where, where you can find more information about Redis plugins. The documentation is available at Redis Grafana github.io and it has all the introduction, uh, quick start, how to start with, uh, with using these plugins, information about with use cases I showed before and there are more of them. There is a GitHub organization for all the projects and the plugins. It's all open source. 
And if you find any issues, just let me know. Any feature requests, support additional commands, we can prioritize and put it in the queue. And there is a Grafana repository at grafana.com or Redis. When you can install it, not using Docker containers, I mean, you can install it using Docker containers, but you can install it in Redis, uh, in Grafana Enterprise, Grafana on Cloud, Grafana Open Source, maybe Grafana AWS as well, any, anywhere where Grafana deployed. So this is more, most uh, free resources. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, just let me know. And you can find me at Mikhail Volkov. And my email is Mikhail at volkovlove.com. For uh, any feedback, you can open any request, feature requests, as I said, on the GitHub repository. Thank you, guys. It's to you. Thank you, Mikhail. And thank you, Justin. And thank you, Davies, for uh, coming out tonight. That was a great talk, uh, Mikhail. Um, and uh, I mostly ha it gave me a chance to use the, the little feature like this, you know, to make you. <laughs> <laughs> To, to, sh to show off uh, your camera with the, the IoT device. That was very, yeah, yeah, very, I see very, very that. cool. It's cool, right? So, yeah. Remember uh, this, this project, which was by, uh, who did it? it? Itamar did it, this project, if you, if you remember that. Yeah. Originally, yeah. right? We counted people on Redis Conf. And now, I mean, but it was with the Prometheus, with additional modules. Now we streamline it. And I have my bed camera, as they call it. Yeah. <laughs> very, very cool. Well, uh, I got, there were a few comments throughout all the talks. Um, I'm just going to highlight a couple of them. Uh, uh, Jeremy Ben uh, decided he said hello, but more importantly, he said Redis is the best. <laughs> I totally agree. As I yeah. said, it's the best tool ever created. Yeah. And uh, apparently, uh, Redis Labs agrees. <laughs> yes. So, no question. Redis uh, is in my heart, right? That's right. I've got one of those shirts too. Um, uh, Jose uh, Saravel, uh, Saravolo uh, uh, commented that this was a really nice format and he uh, liked the program. So thank you, Jose. Um, and we do this every Monday on the uh, uh, every third Monday of every month. So uh, come back uh, next month. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Harold, you uh, during your talk, uh, Davies said uh, that I said, well, he said awesome. So good job. And thank then uh, during your talk, uh, um, uh, Mikael, uh, Jose uh, said that, uh, I, th I think you were just showing the uh, CLI piece, uh, the Redis CLI piece for Grafana, and he, he was commenting that was very cool. So, uh, so yeah, some good comments. Um, Thank you. This is how I do that. Some, I have another dashboard when I actually have four Redis CLI panels, same time. So because <laughs> when you have multimodal database, right, you have, I mean, you of course you can put everything in the same database. But I prefer to have like my data, my time series, AI separate, so I can actually interact and work with them same time. It's pretty cool. Cool. And uh, Jeremy uh, also says, uh, oh, "Wow, how do you guys have such big beards?" Uh, genetics. It's it's genetics. <laughs> do you have anything to add to that, uh, Justin? <laughs> You're muted. No. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, cool. Well, thanks for the compliment on the beard, of course. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here real quick um, just to show. Um, uh, th thanks to our speakers. And um, next month, we have uh, Anders Astrom speaking. Uh, he's got a library called uh, Red, Gear Red Grease, uh, which works with Redis Gears. Uh, this is a talk that he gave at uh, Redis Conf uh, a few months back. So uh, he's going to be uh, our sole presenter uh, next month. So uh, come and check him out. I have not seen Anders speak, but I have heard that he, uh, he's he got a sort of a natural charisma. So I, I think it'll be an entertaining show. Um, uh, you can uh, join the program here, of course, at uh, meetups.redislabs.com slash redislive. And um, subscribe on YouTube and watch this on uh, Twitch if you want to uh, check out the next show. I got, got a little scroller here with uh, all of our, all of the links. But um, if you go to meetups.redislabs.com slash redis-live, uh, you can subscribe and then you'll get notifications when uh, new events are coming up. So, um, And I think that's pretty much all I have. Oh, yeah. So uh, up next, uh, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, I like to hang out on the Discord server. So um, 
Uh, we'll go into the Discord server. There's several voice chat rooms in there. Uh, we'll go drop in one of those, and we can talk about the meetup. And if anyone has any questions they want to ask us in person, they can ask us there. And uh, yeah, we call it after chat, or, or maybe we should call it beyond the meetup. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's what's next. Thanks everyone for coming up tonight, and uh, I'll see you all next month. And for those who are going to stick around, I'll see you on Discord. See you. See you, see you all later. See you, see you later. Bye. Bye.